A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thomas, this is Tenerdus the Human, and welcome to the special games guide edition of Barbarian Invasion, where today we look at the Eastern Empire Rebels. Indeed, it does say it's a moderate campaign difficulty to play as the Eastern Empire, and yes, compared to the West, it certainly is an awful lot easier. Not about difficulties in terms of the hordes and whatnot, but realistically, this is a much easier campaign. What that means for the rebels that we're going to be looking at today, however, is that it's that much more difficult to get a foothold. The Eastern Empire is a lot stronger than the West, and so whilst with the Western rebels you can kind of carve out your own territory without too many problems, a bit tricky at the start, but without too many problems, the Eastern Empire, well that's a different thing altogether, it's quite a lot stronger. So tell you what, we'll load up the campaign map and we'll see quite where we are looking at the start of their campaign. As soon as you load your Eastern Campaign then, you'll notice that there are quite a few armies floating around at the start of the game. Yes, the Eastern Empire are in a much stronger position than the West, and between their various cities, there are decent armies that are going to stand in your way as the Eastern Rebels when you spawn. Yet, they have quite a few troops to begin with, and also they have the money to back it up with more. They have 7,000 at the start, and with a profit of 5,500, whilst it's not huge for this many cities, is certainly enough to be repelling the likes of the Eastern Rebels. So we need to make sure that this campaign isn't done in a haphazard way. I mean, when we looked at the Western Roman Empire, we discussed how, you know, I'll pick whichever city you like, really. There's lots of rebellions, they'll soon join you, yada, yada, yada. But in the case of the Eastern Empire Rebels, I think there needs to be a little bit more strategy and a bit more thought put into it. Because the Eastern Empire are no pushovers. This one's going to be a bit of a tough campaign, I think. If we're going to play as the Eastern Empire Rebels, we need to choose ourselves a city. But there are some historical precedents we could go by to choose this, albeit you can kind of basically choose whatever you like. But from a historical standpoint, it is 363. This is the year that the Emperor Julian the Apostate died fighting Shah Paul II of the Sassanids. And he didn't name a successor, and the army, in a state of panic, didn't know who to pick. In the end, they picked Jovian who ended up dying in Ankara on the way back from the campaigns over in the east. Now, who happened to be there? Valentinian, who is now the emperor of the west of Rome. Or he was the emperor of Rome. He appointed his brother, Valens, over here to be the emperor of the east. Bit of a promotion for Valens, because he really hadn't had an awful lot of a, much of a career by that point. The game says he's 60. He was more like in his early 30s. Obviously the game is putting his age up, just, just kind of had that standard old faction leader at the start. He's going to pass away and then you can kind of build your own kind of story. So there's a bit of extra years added on to him there, but it doesn't matter too much. Essentially though, he spent a lot of his 20s wandering around the various estates of his family in Illyria and things like that. He hadn't done an awful lot. He, he did join the campaign with uh, Julian that previous campaign in 363. So he had a tiny bit of military experience then, but not an awful lot, all things considered. And to be fair, he did quite well as an emperor overall. Let's ignore the uh, fabled Battle of Adrianople where he died in the end, facing off the Goths. But um, by and large, he didn't do too badly for someone who hadn't done an awful lot until that point. Um, but he did have some problems right at the start of his career, because as soon as he became emperor, well, the Sassanids were kind of quite boiled by the fact that they'd done so well against the Romans. They kind of thought, let's go and take some more. So we had to go fairly immediately and try and deal with the problem of the Sassanids. But um, yeah, straight away, Procopius decided to lead a revolt and take over Constantinople. Now Procopius, you might ask, who is he? He was actually the cousin of Julian, so he had a fairly decent reason to be you know, emperor, essentially. He had a pretty good claim. He was part of the Constantine dynasty. Um, the only thing was, he wasn't there at the time that Julian died. If he was, he may well have just taken over straight away. He was actually leading a bit of a distraction campaign to pull away the Sassanid army whilst they were attacking Cessaphon, the Sassanid capital. But it all went a bit wrong, and he wasn't there when uh, Julian died. So he took his chance after being in hiding for a while and took Constantinople the minute that Juli that well, the minute that Valens left. So that kind of is where the Eastern rebels come from. It's from that kind of Procopius uprising that you get. Now, I don't think Constantinople would be a fair one for us to take. It's a bit of a strong city, isn't it, to um, give ourselves as the Eastern Empire rebels. But it, I suppose it would make some sense. 
which city will we start as as the Eastern Empire rebels then? Well, for me, I think it's got to be a pagan city. Indeed, powerful faith, paganism. This message comes up right at the start of the game, and it really points to some key, key drivers in the game mechanics, because a lot of the public order issues you will see around the map, a lot of the disillusionment is down to religious strife. So, case in point is Philadelphia over here, which is currently 25% public order, pretty low. A lot of that though is down to religious differences. You can see here it's mainly a Christian city, but it has currently a pagan temple. So if we get rid of the pagan temple, it's suddenly an awful lot happier, and that makes a key difference. So I think if we're gonna play as the rebels, we want to be, well, we want to be the pagan rebels. You know, we want to be fighting this religious battle because that's where a lot of the cities are going to be flipping to do with those religious problems, the religious strife. So I think from a gameplay point of view, from a game mechanics point of view, it makes absolute sense to be playing as the pagan rebels. But it also makes sense from a historical point of view. You see, we've already discussed how 363 BC was when Julian the Apostate died. Indeed, Julian the Apostate was a key emperor because he tried to re-paganise the Roman Empire. And it's worth bearing in mind, Constantine the Great was only, what, 30 years ago that he passed away when he Christianised the Roman Empire. So it's not been Christian for that long, at least not from the top down anyway. And Julian the Apostate tried to re-paganise the Empire. He died really young. He was only a couple years into his reign when he passed away. And what that kind of means is it's really one of those big what-ifs of history. What if Julian the Apostate had stayed around for 20 years, say? Would he have been able to completely get rid of the Christian influence in the Empire? That would have completely changed the history of the world as we know it. it of course, that is a what-if, but this is very much where the game is set. In this period of you know, is it going to go back to Christianity or is it going to go back to paganism? And it, it does it does obviously drive a lot of the rebellions in the game. So we want to kind of play that. We want to play on that particular thing. So we want to pick a pagan city. There are a few candidates for this. Now, Titus Flavius here is actually a Christian in what is a city with a pagan temple. So a bit like Philadelphia, he's one of those ones where actually you're probably just going smash down the pagan temple and you sort of fix the problem. Um, Sinope is kind of similar again, it's got itself the Temple of Mithras, but it is majority Christian. What I really want is a city that is at least pagan in kind of its spirit, and Salamis does kind of fit the bill. Salamis is 50-50, and I think with an inspiring leader, the people of Salamis, the pagans of Salamis, can rise up and can take back their pagan empire that the death of Julian has cruelly, cruelly taken from them. So I think this is kind of where we want to go with this. We want to be the pagan rebellion, yes. Do bear in mind that um, obviously other cities will rebel and join you. So whilst we're picking Salamis, this is just kind of our starting point. It isn't all about conquering, there will be rebellions too. Now Salamis. Salamis is interesting because we don't actually have a general. It's also interesting because we're in Ireland. I think in some ways this is a double-edged sword. Um, it does mean, are they going to attack us from sea? Maybe. I don't know quite how the AI are going to behave about it. Most probably they will, but it will certainly buy us a bit of time, give us a chance to build up our abedding just a little bit. And I think that might be a good way to play. I think Salamis is where I'm going to choose anyway. You obviously can choose wherever you like. Wherever you like, though, you've got to bear in mind which units you've got so you're cutting and pasting the right, file, the right sort of units in the document later. Um, I do want a leader though, and the leader I like the look of is Crispus Flavius over here in Jerusalem. He is a pagan, first and foremost, but he's also a popular hero. You know, he's a master trader, he's a skilled bureaucrat, he's an agriculturalist. Up the reds, woohoo! But he, he seems like he's um, he's got something about him, you know? He's a sort of man who could lead this uprising. And of course, at the moment, he's a pagan in a Christian city. So I think it would make good sense from a narrative point of view, for example, to have Crispus Flavius in Salamis as our leader of the Eastern Empire rebels. So without any further ado, we do, I guess, need to get into the game files and start editing. So we'll take you in there now and we'll see how we can make this happen. Once you know where your Steam library is, you can go into Steam Apps, into Gummen, into the game Rome Total War, where you will find BI4 Barbarian Invasion. Inside there, you need the data folder, down to the world folder, maps, campaign, 
Barbarian Invasion. And then you get to the Deska underscore strat file. As ever, that's the one we need. As you open the Deska underscore strat file, you will find yourself the list of playable and unplayable factions. We are simply going to take the Empire East Rebels, cut those out, and we are going to paste them up here in the playable section. And that's a nice simple enough start. Now from there, we need to go and find the information about that faction. So if we use Control F for find, we can simply jump straight down to it. So faction Empire East Rebels, get rid of dead until resurrected. We can leave re-emergent. You're not technically going to have a chance to re-emerge if you do lose all your cities or all your generals. But, you know, we're going to keep that in there anyway. Denari, 5,000. That will give us a little bit of a starting point, I think. Now, on the note of starting points, we do need to give ourselves a city. So Cyprus is the region that we need to take. So I'm just going to take the settlement here. And just going to cut that out. I'm just going to make sure I've left the one space as it was before. So I will go back up to mine. Now, I tend to write emergent because I find that's an easy way to find the faction. Uh, much easier than to have an empire underscore east underscore rebels. I tend to make a mistake in there somewhere. I will paste settlement underneath. And now we've got the start of something. We then need to move on to our general. Now, our general is Crispus Flavius, isn't it? Crispus. So take ourselves up to Crispus. Crispus Aeneas, we can leave him alone. Crispus Flavius is actually the list of the family tree, actually. So we do need to take him out of here. And that's fine. We will then go carry on going up. And here we are, Crispus Flavius. And conveniently, very conveniently, in fact, he's right next to the army of Cyprus. This is the army that's in Cyprus. And apparently the random general is Herennius. What we're going to do is take Crispus Flavius and add him into this army before we take him to our faction. So we want to go and take the coordinates. Now these are currently the Jerusalem coordinates and we just want to swap those around. Okay, so we want to take those coordinates and just give them a swapsies. So that's fine. Now Crispus is going to appear in Cyprus and Herennius is going to appear in Jerusalem. Um, but we need to do a little bit more yet. So we're going to take the Imperial Household Bodyguard and just cut the whole character and the unit out and post it above up here. We just need to make sure now that we go and take Herennius out of here and we go and post him underneath. So now he is in this position here. Lovely. So he will now appear in Jerusalem and we will now appear in, da -da 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 -da, in Cyprus. Lovely. So we've got to now cut that out and paste it back with our faction. So I want to write emergent again. I must find that an easy way to locate myself. And there we are, Cyprus. So underneath that, we can leave one space. Be careful with the space, and it's very easy to make a mist mistake in that regard. And we have ourselves set up. So um, at this point, we're kind of getting there. Do need two spaces in that position. Named character. He's a named character who's a leader. So named character, comma, leader. Lovely. And we also want to give him the traits of Roman faction leader. So let's just search for that a moment. Roman faction leader one. Perfect. We'll copy that and we'll head back down to our faction and just give that to our guy. Obviously, you can just type that in. It's not a problem. I just try and avoid mistakes by uh, just copying where I absolutely can. So that's lovely. So loyalty started. Da, 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 da. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I think at this point we're nearly done, aren't we? The only other thing we need to sort out is um, the boats, because we did want to give ourselves some of those boats that were hanging out outside Cyprus. Now they were on Admiral Illus. So I'm just going to research for him. And there we go. He is up here, he's got a brireme and a trireme. So we're going to cut those out. And we are then going to bring those down to our faction and post them in underneath. Perfect. OK, so if we go down to ours, give it a space 
and that should be perfect. Just make sure you've got two spaces there. And that should be everything set up. Do have a quick little check. Named character leader. Perfect. He's got Roman faction leader. He's got the Imperial bodyguard. We've got our boats and we've given ourselves a bit of money. Perfect. I'm going to save up and let's go back onto the campaign map. When we reload the main campaign then, we'll be able to play as the Eastern Roman Rebels. No description of course, because they are unplayable essentially, but I've given you the kind of blurb. So let's head in 363 AD. Remember, we are not emerging, we are simply programmed to be here at the start. So 5,000 monies and our city of Salamis here. Crispus Flavius is our, yes, our main man here, Augustus in fact. So that is our Roman faction leader trait coming through. And I guess you want to be making your decisions about what you do early on. Obviously, your money isn't going to hold for that long. I'll probably go for mines. That will certainly pay for itself in 10 turns time. Now, obviously at this point, it is just a normal campaign. But you do need to think about the fact that, you know, you don't have an, a huge amount of money. You probably want to get yourself in the position to pounce um, at, at whatever opportunity you see. So I would probably establish some sort of surveillance but essentially you're now going to be in the position where you wait for some of these other cities to rebel um, and as you press end turn you'll start to see troop movements especially if you've got some uh, scouting around yes so we've got ourselves a benefactor now this guy's Christian so we're going to hold off on him because remember this is the pagan empire we don't want to confuse everything that's going on here um, so as we enter town again, we'll hopefully get given a second option. That is not ideal. Yes, yeah, so hopefully that isn't going to happen when you play, or uh, you get moving a bit quicker. This time, this is this is a good option actually. So we've got command talent, been in the wars, and a pagan. Most importantly, so now we have Gondobad Urbanius, uh, and if you go to a family tree, you can see they are indeed there. Let's set him as our faction heir once more. Marvellous, and at this point you can get on and play the game how you want to, albeit now we're kind of lacking a boat. So, uh, we'll see how things go. But yeah, realistically, it's a normal campaign. You might want to be aggressive, you might want to try and build this up, but you are going to run out of money pretty quickly. You might want to send a diplomat over to the Sassanids. Sassanids are getting straight in there with the assault on... Um, yeah, we're not getting very... And we've lost our ship. Oh, we got away with that. I don't know how we got away with that. Normally three means you're dead. Seems like that's our sign there, ladies and gentlemen, to start heading onto the ship and over to Saito. <laughs> and uh, obviously it would make sense to use a little bit of aggressive tactics. Let's just get all the ladders in the world. If he stops shouting at me, I can now turn down the tax rate to make sure this guy doesn't get thrown out immediately. Now... All right, we're now going to get these troops trapped over here, aren't we? Because the boat is going to go down. But if we've got Sidon, we have the start of a little game and empire here. Now, it looks like there's an army there. I'll water resolve for now. And as we exterminate, we've now got some money. We've got some profit. And we can consider doing something. I'm honestly, I'm just going to get some spies out. Because if I can get these places to rebel... Then they're going to join me. Worth noting, by the way, rebels are actually neutral to you. As uh, fellow rebels, they give you a little nod. Say, yes, anarchy. We praise you, sirs. So actually, you know, with the not war with the rebels, um, I suspect they'll probably have a poke if they can. But actually, just, just let them be. Works for you, I suppose. But yeah, use the spies to your advantage. Um, this is fairly aggressive, but I think you're going to have to be. Once you've got this foothold... You want to just obviously try and hold, try and slowly build, take opportunities as you get them. But luckily, now we've got the mines in, we're in a much better position to start moving forward. You don't necessarily have to sack the city, but um, you might start having problems because you do need to start turning the pagan and the Christians around. So I probably would recommend not, <laughs> not destroying this straight away. Let's have a little look what happens if I do. Okay, you can just about get away with that. Son of Victus and Mithras. Mithras does give you troop experience, so maybe you'd go and do that and try and convert it whilst you've just exterminated. Probably the best plan, actually. So you can see here, we've got a, a tough start, but a start nonetheless, something we can um, get going with. And now that we have two cities, 
we can get going with the ports, but we really could do with a couple ports. But anyway, I'll let you go and explore however you want to play this campaign. Um, we haven't actually seen anything flip yet, so I'm just going to go on to the easy difficulty and see what cities are likely to flip for us. Having played around on easy for a little while, I have eventually got myself a Loyalist Revolt. In fact, two of them, I've got Jerusalem and Sinope to flip over to me. But it has taken until 371 AD, that's eight years into the game. So it isn't something that's just happening again and again and again. It's kind of a big boon when it happens. It's not something that just pops out of nowhere like with the Western Rebels or indeed the normal Rebels. Um, now, obviously, this is this is a big boon here. I've managed to get Jerusalem for free, and I've got all the siege equipment in the world, apparently, to go and, uh, you know, move on from. But, essentially, your campaign's, in some ways, got a, a kind of fairly normal feel to it, but just with a nice twist, and I think you are in a difficult spot. It should be a really interesting game to play. However, um, before I leave you for today, there is just one other way that you can do this that I think I really would like to show off to you. So the last thing I want to show you is an alternative way that you could be playing this. Now, big shout out to Ryo Down Gaming who spent a couple hours with me um, showing me quite a lot of the in-depth scripting behind the game and how you can kind of make this a little bit more of an organic experience. Now, I think personally it's probably going to be a little bit much to um, show as a kind of a guide thing. I think it would probably lose too many people, you know, even with him talking me through it. It was still quite a while to get it all set up, but it's certainly an interesting way of presenting the game. Now, he's actually changed a bit of the script here, so I like to play this faction, then you start the game as the Rebels, and from there, you can go and follow the advice screen. So, if we start as the Rebels, I can kind of show off what he's put together, and it's kind of quite interesting, really. So, you start as the Rebels, and if you want to play as... The Western Roman Rebels, you can go click here and just click on the show me how. Or indeed, if we're going to play the East as we are here, then again, we can click on Petra and show me how. Now, this will actually just play the game round until the faction emerges, which for the Eastern Empire might well take a while, <laughs> all things considered. But it's a really intriguing way of playing it because it's a little bit more random. We've obviously chosen Cyprus and I thought it was quite fun with regards to a narrative. But what you'll eventually find is when this faction pops up is that we get to play as whatever organically appears, which I think is quite a nice way of doing it. So eventually the game has thrown me into Jerusalem. It is 371 AD in the winter time. It was that the exact same time as in the previous little clip? I think it was actually. And yeah, so we now have Jerusalem and we take control of the Eastern Rebels. It does have a nice organic feel to it playing like this, doesn't it? It really does. Um, although I will say if you were to try and do this yourself, it does involve quite a bit of coding. I could follow it when it was explained to me, but um, I think it would be a little bit much to kind of show in a video, which is why I've kind of showed it to you the way I already have, where you just give yourself Cyprus. But nonetheless, a big shout out to Ride Down Gaming because this has been really intriguing to look at and certainly a different way to approach this kind of thing. Um, you know, he spent a couple hours with me, which is which is grand. You know, it's always interesting to hear a way that someone else would go and do this. And obviously it has a slightly different feel to it, the game now, because rather than me having kind of building my own narrative, I've kind of got a kind of random one and you can very much play this differently each time and see which faction or which city pops up to begin your faction. But anyway, I will leave you for now. Um, I may well get to another one of these little guide videos sometime soon. I don't have an exact date for you, um, but probably within the next month we'll see another one of these. But for now, I will leave you. I'm Thomas, this is an Edited Human, and this has been a Game Guide edition of Barbarian Invasion, how to play as the Eastern Empire Rebels. Thank you, and bye-bye. Welcome to the strangely Irish edition of Star Trek Armada 2. Anyone want to finish off this board Stand cube? By. It's not going very well for us. Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. <laughs> the card is talking from the death. We've lost our best hope of stopping the No, it's happened again. We have failed.